it's, uh, it's really awesome to be here. I've been exactly where you're sitting before, and uh, you know the internet's only been around for 15 years, so actually the internet is just uh, an adolescent. So it's quite interesting to see how our industry is changing, and as marketers, the one thing that you guys are always wanting to be thinking about is um, what problem could you solve for your, for your clients, right? And that's how do you get my, you know, your customers uh, to share your business, to recommend your brand to their friends. And really what it's all about is the relationship between you and your customer. And how can you show them that you appreciate their business? Um, you know, appreciate those kind words and, and sharing word of mouth. And the most effective form of word of mouth today is online. Uh, we're tweeting, we're posting, we're texting, we're, you know, I can tell you that I'm an extremely social person. I love people, but I live on my laptop and on my phone. Um, I wake up, I work, I go to the office, I work some more. I go out and I meet with clients, work some more, go back to the office, work some more, and then go home, sleep, repeat. I do have a boyfriend and I do try to fit him into that sometimes. But, you know, all of my friends are hearing from me and communicating with me through my social space. And uh, we recently had a feature in Ink, Ink Magazine. Blue Calypso Ink is a, is a digital uh, advertising and social media company. And uh, Clip is our product. Uh, Clip is a loyalty and rewards app for sharing the brands and businesses that you love. And there was a customer, her name um, is Erin Cox. She is a small business owner of a company called The Sweet Spot. And The Sweet Spot is a luxury sugaring business. I know that some of us don't want to admit it, but we have hair and faces that we just don't want to talk about. So if you are a girl, I mean, how are you going to, you really want to start talking about, you know, where you're getting your hair removed? You know, generally not. However, if you think about it, you are very passionate about good places that you find, and you definitely want to share those secrets with your friends. So Erin had been in the um, beauty industry for a decade. She was an esthetician. She started learning the, sh the sugaring, which is a form of, uh, it's kind of like waxing, but it's sugar based, and it's a super uber luxury service. So she had been working for other people, working at other salons, and she wanted to go out on her own. So she set up shop. She did all of her branding. Um, she's got beautiful creative, she had beautiful business cards, great website, um, and she was ready to open her doors. Well, she didn't quite know what to do. She had a really good email list of clients that she had been servicing over the past few years. Um, she had their cell phone numbers, so she could text them. So she had email, and she had text, and then she had Facebook on the way that she communicated with her customers. So she had a steady flow of, of people that followed her when she opened her own shop, but she was trying to figure out a way that she could get a much bigger exposure. How many of you guys have done Living Social or Group One? Show of hands. How many of those were businesses that you had never tried before? How many of you went back? Okay, so that's very interesting information. Erin um, thought to herself, I'm gonna do Living Social. Living Social looks cool, it's got nice branding, it goes along with my company, it's very edgy. And so Erin you know, got with Living Social, she set her Living Social account up, and her Living Social rep explained to her the process. So Living Social requires you to do a 50 to 60% discount on the product. Then Living Social splits that with you, the, the business owner. So Erin's service is an $80 service, so she had to discount it to uh, by 60%. So suddenly she's you know losing a lot of money there, and then she has to do the service. It's the same amount of product. It's the same amount of time at her table, but she was like, this is a great way for me to get exposure. So suddenly she had all these appointments. Her schedule was completely full. And then she found herself not able to get her customers that had been coming to her for a really long time into the books. And so while she was super busy, she wasn't driving a lot of dollars to the door, and she started to notice that the customers that were her new customers through Living Social weren't rebooking. And so she started looking at her books and who were my repeat customers? And who are my new customers that are repeat customers? And what Erin found out was her repeat customers were the people that had been with her all along. And then the new customers that were repeat customers were referrals from those people that had been coming to see her. And so she asked herself, how do I hug my customers back and thank them for sharing me 
to their friend, and then how do I give them a program where they're motivated to continue to do it? And she saw on Facebook a lot of other local businesses that people were recommending businesses and saw Clip. And so that's how Erin got connected with us, she called, to get more information. So, you know, I'm Sabrina, and I'm the CMO of Blue Clipso, and I'm the proud parent of Clip. So I worked with our developers over the past year on developing this product. Um, you can social stalk me, I'm Sabrina D I'm at Twitter. It's also my email. Uh, and then Clip Dallas and Clip Endorsers are the two Twitters that you can find uh, Clip on. You know, what Aaron understood is that one voice can influence thousands, even tens of thousand voices. Um, what if all of your customers were sharing your message with their friends? What if all of your customers were sharing your campaign creative that they personalized and made their own? You know, if I get a mass text, and so I go to a lot of trade shows, I go to a lot of conferences, I speak at a lot of conferences, and um, I will always bite to things like I just showed you. I'll follow people on Twitter, or I'll, you know, do their short codes, because I want to see what people are doing in the industry. Um, you know, I'm still a student. And so the Gap has uh, a short code that you sign up to become, you know, to opt into the Gap's SMS texting. I get things from the Gap every other day, sometimes twice a day, and it's about a discount. I will never go into the Gap and pay full price again. And that's something that, you know, and plus I don't even look at it. I mean, I get it. I, I know that it's a mass text message. I don't even pay attention. If my friend Sonu were to send me a text message and say, hey, Sabrina, I know that you love, um, you know, the kills. You might be into Fantagram. They're, they're playing in Dallas. Here's a link to purchase tickets. I pay attention to that because he knows what I like and there was an opportunity for me to click through and do a great call to action. Um, and really what it's about is personalization, it's about the relationship and relationship marketing is the best way to drive your message across. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but the average social and mobile customer, which is people like you, you guys have a unique influence of about 455 people. And I'm willing to bet that because you're marketing students that you actually have a lot higher reach than this. How many of you guys know what your cloud score is today? Raise your hand. How many of you guys know what a cloud score is? That's interesting. So cloud, that's K-L-O-U-T. Go to cloud.com. Cloud is a social influence metric. Cloud can tell you how big your personal influence is by looking at your Facebook, your Twitter, and basically all of your, your personal touch points and how you interact with people online. Uh, personally, I'm a junkie, so I mean, I have you know a thousand people, and that I know every single one of them on Facebook. I have a few hundred followers on Twitter. I don't feel like I nurture that relationship enough, but my cloud score is above <coughs> average, and I'm considered a super influencer. I'd be willing to bet that a lot of you actually are as well. And you know, how can a brand capture that personal relationship, right? So you have a relationship with your customer. You have to nurture that relationship with your customer. If you have something um, like this living social deal of the day space, Aaron had a monetary relationship with those people. The relationship was they got a discount coming in to see her business, and as soon as that financial relationship was broken, the relationship no longer existed. Because when it's about money, there's nothing to drive you back there if that discount doesn't exist anymore. But if it's about service, and it's about um, customer appreciation, and it's about you having you know, the best product line and educating your customer that you have the best products for their skin, and um, if you reward that customer for sharing, then you know, that is deepening that relationship for your customer, and you can get a return on that relationship. Um, you know, really, the whole relationship model goes full circle in 360 when you think about it, because now you're talking about well, not only does the sweet spot have a relationship with their customer, but now they can benefit from having a relationship with all of those friends. So imagine this, if you had 100 of your customers that was actually sharing your message, suddenly you have 455,000 people that are seeing your message. Instead of putting a print ad into the Dallas Observer, you can have your customers, 100 of them, giving you the same exposure, and it's a qualified eye that wants to see that. And that's a lot stronger of a, you know, of a tie to, to make you want to actually flip through, check it out, find more information. And so what Clip does for our customers 
and what we did with Aaron was we set up a clip program. Clip programs are 90-day programs. <coughs> they consist of campaigns, um, campaign perks, like awarded perks for sharing those campaigns, and then just general perks for being a great customer. And so, you know, it's all about personal endorsement. I'm going to endorse the sweet spot because I love her. I think that her service is the best, her product is the best, and frankly, she is the less, uh, least painful. Any of you ladies out there that understand the pain that we go through, all of you men should say thank you. <laughs> Um, you know, endorsements are all about um, the share, you know, and saying, you know, Dwayne Wade, he has an endorsement deal with T-Mobile. Dwayne Wade and his people, and I don't know if you guys are aware of this, in, in the entertainment industry, all these endorsement deals that you guys see out of the media, they are very selective. They don't just take money from any brand that's going to pay them. And why is that? Because they have to protect their integrity of who they are and the brands that they want to align themselves with. Dwayne Wade is a T-Mobile customer. He doesn't just take money from T-Mobile. He uses T-Mobile. Um, Jay-Z is, I think, a Virgin customer, and he uses Virgin Mobile. And you know these endorsement deals, and the, and the purpose of me telling you that is when you align yourself with brands, you're endorsing that brand. And that is what Clip is all about. It's endorsing the brands and the products and the places that you love. And that's super valuable to brands and businesses. Um, People want to think that they're not made up of brands. Oh, I'm not a brand person. I like independent things. But I can tell you that I am made up of many brands, and I'm willing to bet that you guys are too. I'm looking around the room, and I see the different brands that you're wearing. Tap Out, Hollister, uh, Ralph Lauren, um, Texas Rangers, but Texas Rangers? Um, and those are all brands. You know, the Rangers are a brand. And so when you walk through life making brand choices, you're raising your hand and saying, I believe in this product. Starbucks. I'm a Starbucks junkie. Um, who am I? My, my brand personality is Smart Water, Starbucks, um, Victoria's Secrets, love that store, Nordstrom. I'm a huge, huge Nordstrom shopper. Why? Because they have an incredible brand loyalty program. I can go to Nordstrom's. I can spend my dollars with them buying the same product that I could buy at Macy's for the same price. But with Nordstrom, they actually give me Nordstrom bucks and they send it to me. So I get these points and then they mail me gift certificates of cash that I can spend on anything inside Nordstrom. As a thank you, they hug me. They say, thanks for being a Nordstrom customer. And so I continue to spend my dollars with Nordstrom. So that's loyalty. You know, they're, they're creating a deeper relationship with me as their customer and now I'm spending my money with them. So they have more of my share of mine. Because instead of going out to all the other stores where I can get a lot of a similar products, Troy Birch, you know, Steve Madden, and I could go directly to a store, but if I go to Nordstrom, I have a reason to spend my money with them as opposed to spending it somewhere else. So they've increased my customer spend and they've increased my brand loyalty. I share that on, uh, on Facebook, you know, every time I check in to Nordstrom, people know that's where I'm shopping. Um, I love to share that my things that I buy on Facebook because me and my girls are spread out all across the country. So we share our shopping experiences with each other through social. You know, um, being a busy professional, you don't have a whole lot of downtime to spend with the people that you love. So social media is a great way to connect, and that's a great way for brands to take advantage of the conversation. So the viral impact and you know, inspiring me to tell my story will you know, touch all of the other people that I communicate with and suddenly they've got the share of mind of those people, Nordstrom does. <clears throat> uh, accountability of ad spend is a really big deal. And it's all about measuring what your influence is and who is talking about you. And one thing that's really interesting in the social space is you know, uh, with Twitter, with uh, Share Now, Get Glue, I mean, the list can go on and on and on. It's a very, very uh, deep space right now. But one really cool thing that Clip does is we allow, so if you're a brand or business on Clip and you basically have a program like Erin did at the Sweet Spot, she created campaigns, she went out and she let her customers know about the program and they download the Clip app, they find the Sweet Spot and then they share that campaign with their friend, automatically they get perks from her and thank you for that share. So when you, know, you get to share the message, so you select the, camp the endorsement opportunity in the app, and then you get to customize it and say what you, what you think about this brand and share that with your friends. So your friends know you. You know, your friends, uh, I drive a Lexus, I'm not going to endorse Mercedes. If I did, or Ford, or a Chevy, my friends would be like, give me a break. 
and my personal integrity is really important to me in my social space, as I'm sure it is to all of you. So the really cool thing about endorsing with Clip is that you get to select the things that you love, you get to make it your own, and then you get to share it with your friends in the, in the ways in which you communicate. Um, I am a really big Facebooker, as I said. Um, I'm sometimes on Twitter. I have a blog. I never use it. I never post. Um, and I email, and I text like crazy. So those are the ways that I, that I clip, that I share through Clip. But there are other people who are really heavy on email and really big bloggers. Uh, we have a, what's her name, Taylor, uh, she's an endorser, she has 45,000 followers on Twitter. I looked at Taylor's earnings on Clip, and she has earned with Clip because of the brand, our program that rewards you with the brand perks from the brand, but then Clip gives you cash on your influence, right? So instead of um, a brand paying a magazine to place an ad to get all, of, you know, these impressions, they're actually giving their ad spend back to their customers that love them and rewarding you on your reach. She earned $20,000 over the past seven months with Liv. Just tweeting. And that's because she is interested in fashion, she's interested in fitness, she is a content machine. People follow her. She is not a journalist, she is just an everyday girl who is into fashion, who is into fitness, and people value her opinions. So she doesn't get on clip and just start sharing things like a monkey with a button. She's actually, you know, endorsing things that she really likes, like Jay-Z would do or like Dwayne Wade would do, aligning herself with a brand that she believes in, like the shirts that you guys are wearing, the hats that you guys are wearing in here. So you guys are sharing every single day. So why not become a clip endorser, share the things you love, get paid for that, as well as get loyalty perks and discover new brands, but also get a deeper relationship with those brands. And that's you know what we do. So when you guys select the ways that you want to share as an endorser, you know we're tracking all of the ways that you share, and that's really valuable. And guess what? Everybody else is tracking you too. So anytime that you're online, people are watching you, and that's not a bad thing. People are really like, oh, you know, that's that's so int intrusive, and you know, I don't want people following me. And you know, in the advertising industry right now, they're in Congress. They are having to lobby to protect the ability to write off your advertising budget as a business owner. If you were to think about how many people in America work in the advertising and marketing industry and how many people will be out of jobs if Congress basically told us, oops, no more, you can't write that off. It would be a really bad situation. You know, they don't want, they don't want people uh, tracking, they don't want brands and businesses tracking what you're interested in online. Why? All that is is customization for you to get served up things that you, you might actually be interested in. Instead of getting a, you know, Cialis ad, like who cares about pharmaceuticals, right? If you're interested, I'm, you know, I stay at the W hotels a lot, and when I will get served up things that are in line with uh, the W and the brands that the W kind of falls in line with because of that type of advertising and behavioral tracking. So it's actually a really, really cool thing. What's cool with Clip, while we're not tracking the behavior, what we're tracking is the share. So we're tracking how many of, of your endorsers, Motorola, Motorola is one of our customers, um, when they're endorsing Motorola tablets, they're endorsing the Motorola Zoom, um, they're endorsing the Motorola HTC Android, uh, how are they sharing it? Are they sharing it through email? Are they sharing it through uh, text? Are they sharing it through Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus? Because Clip allows you to share in all the different ways in which you want to speak to your friends. And so the really unique thing about that is they can see the traction and measure what's most effective. Like, where are they actually getting traction? Are they getting traction from lots of tweets? Are they getting traction from friend-to-friend -friend text? And then we can tell them, well, here was the reach of that particular endorser. So we know how many, um, you know, how many follows that Sonu has on Twitter, how many friends he has on Facebook, how many people he texts um, this really cool campaign, uh, endorsement opportunity to. And then... You know, the brand can look and see what's really working. Do you guys uh, love or, okay, for all people that love and for all people that hate, keep your hands down, um, the Old Spice campaign. Love? Love? Okay. So uh, that tested really poorly before they actually released those campaigns. And they went, they were huge. So they had a huge gamble in deciding whether or not they were actually going to release those pieces of creative into the marketplace. And uh, thankfully, they, they won. Broadcast is very expensive. 
And the cool thing with Clip is that a brand can test different types of creative and see in real time what people are actually liking. What, what are they sharing? What are, those, what are those shares passing on? Because when you share something, it'll go as far as a relationship between your friends and their friends will take it. And so we can track all of those things. You know, understanding the results of the data is really important too. I know that you guys are, I'm sure, aware that there are two career paths that you can really choose in marketing today, and that's to go into the social mobile space, in, in, into digital, or and basically, you know, work in digital creative, come up with really great concepts to actually build relationships with your customers and tell great brand stories, or you can choose to take the data route and you can follow the data. You can be a collector of, of information and, and analytics and measuring the success of things. But one thing to keep in mind is um, you have to understand the results of that data and know what to do and what are the actionable things that you do to actually make good brand decisions. So um, that's one of the things that, that we do with our customers is that not only do we measure the success, but we help them understand the results of their campaign um, and they know where their money went. So instead of buying um, you know, a lot of things that don't have, have great metrics, with us they can see in black and white where their spend went. How many people did they touch? How much activity did they drive? How many impressions did they get? And not only impressions, but how many people actually looked at the campaign? And then how many people actually followed all these calls to action? Whether that is, you know, click to purchase on Amazon, um, you know, go in store, or activate the promo code, and redeem, you know, gifts with purchase. Um, the technology that we have today is really, really incredible, but none of it matters if you're not inspiring people to share and tell your stories. It's all about the story. It's all about the relationship. And um, so what we can do today and what Clip does is we take all the cool technology that we have and we apply it to everyday relationships between brands and their customers and um, those customers and their friends. So if you're a Clip customer like Aaron was, the way that, that Clip works, the brand experience, they come into us, um, they decide on a package, a package size and a spend size, and then we create 90-day programs. So even if you're an annual customer, we're going to do it quarterly. And we're going to create programs for you that include um, campaigns, that include your perks. And then we're going to activate your customers. So you know, activating your customers is basically getting them involved. And then you'll watch as your campaigns are virally distributed. And then we'll measure your success through really detailed reporting. So that reporting uh, can come by way of your account manager or you can have your own login. Uh, you'd be shocked how many different variables there are between local businesses and brands and their needs. So uh, we're you know, a really pliable business and we basically can deliver whatever the customer's needs are. Um, so one thing that's so cool about Clip and about our whole program is that it's full screen creative. How much can you fit into an annoying banner ad? <laughs> Not a lot. So I remember when I was younger and um, I mean, it was not that long ago, I, I promise. Um, I bought advertising, or I bought magazines for the ads. I mean, yes, I was an avid reader, but the, the selections that I chose, I was a reader of Rolling Stone, I was a reader of Vogue, now I'm a reader of Lucky Magazine, and um, ads are pretty, and I'm a creative person. So I look to ads to inspire me and even inspire my wardrobe. I mean, yes, the editorial content is great, but I've always been really inspired by advertising. And one thing that the digital um, and, and interactive space has not yet, until us, been able to achieve is making that same emotional connection in the digital space. How much can you fit creatively into a banner ad? I mean, really. Um, and how are those banner ads being served up to you? They're interruptive. Um, you're in your app and you're playing a game and all of a sudden there's you know, ads that start coming up. Or in Pandora, it's suddenly like a living social ad in your face and you're trying to you know, find what you want to listen to pretty annoying and disruptive advertising is not cool. But when a friend sends you something because they know you and they know that you're probably going to like it and it's going to be something that you're interested in, that's not interrupted. You get a text from a friend, hey, check this out. You make the choice. Do I want to click on that? So you click it, we serve it up and it's full screen creative and you can really get a taste of what that brand is all about or what that event is all about or what that restaurant is all about. I and mean, then we build in multiple calls to action for whatever your needs are to facilitate what do they do next. How do they start a relationship with your brand? And so, you know, this full screen creative is um, our technology basically optimizes your creative. So it's really interesting dealing with a lot of these brands who are, believe it or not, 
some of these brands are so far behind. And some of the brands that you would think would be behind are not. American Airlines. American Airlines is one of the most forward-thinking branding, um, you know, big box brands that there, are, there is in the space. Uh, their mobile app is really intuitive. I mean, walking in and being able, I mean, I love not having to have paper tickets because I'm always in a rush to get to the airport, much like I was in a rush to make it on time here today. Never on time, ever. Well, I'm never on schedule, I'm always on time. Um, you know, they, they do a really good job. They, have you guys know Instagram? How many people use Instagram? <clears throat> I love Instagram. I'm an Instagram junkie. Um, but I also used to be a photographer in another life. So, and not really another life, but, you know, when I was younger. <laughs> but uh, Instagram is super fun because you can share the way that you see the world through photos with your friends and share them socially. And so American Airlines, in their genius, put together a, a, an Instagram promotion where basically you took photographs of the places that you wish you could visit, and then you could Instagram those and basically put the different effects that you wanted on it, and then you would tweet it with the American Airlines hashtag, and they started giving trips away. So what did they accomplish? They got Mindshare with their customers. They got people sharing American Airlines, and then they became a trending topic on Twitter because they had a hashtag in order to win. That's brilliant. And, you know, and that's building a relationship with your customer, getting them to, you know, telling them that you care about them, you care about where they want to want to visit. You know, you're giving them something for engaging with your brand. Um, and you know, that is that's really, really, really unique. Now, I wish that American Airlines would quit doing banner ads and start doing full screen clip campaigns. But hey, we're meeting with them next week, so maybe that's uh, on the horizon, right? Um, another part of the setup with with clip is the perks. So as a clip endorser, there are four levels that you can earn, okay? So just by becoming a clip endorser, you actually are already preferred. And then you earn points for everything that you do. So you earn points for rating campaigns, rating perks, sharing, um, you know, sharing your endorsements with your friends, um, and, just, and ultimately just playing in the app. And so the more points that you get, um, you achieve different levels. So as you achieve different levels from preferred to gold to platinum to elite, you get more, you get better perks in the brand. So, you know, like Aaron at the sweet spot, I think it was something like, um, you know, you got a complimentary eyebrow shaping, you know, with, with uh, another full body service, um, or all the way up to a lead, it was like a, you know, she gave you a free <coughs> gift, it was actually a product. So she basically gave you something that you were gonna purchase anyways and, and gave that to you to thank you because you're an elite endorser. So I think I told you guys about cash, right? So you, are, you start earning cash once you become a gold level endorser. That just basically means that you're you know, a valued endorser and that you guys have an influence and that you um, are not a spammer. Uh, we, are, we have a two spam time rule in your app. Our technology knows what you're doing. If you are clicking on your own <laughs> ad, and we can tell by IP address, we can tell by location, we can tell by um, there's a ton of different ways that we can see what's going on, then you know, we cut you off. We don't want people that are not really genuine about the, the brand that they're endorsing because it sacrifices the integrity of the endorsement. So um, you, know, you can jump to gold and you start getting paid. So the more interaction that you're generating for the brands and products and businesses that you love, the more that you're financially rewarded because you know, it's just like, when you make you're an ad buyer and you're going to decide where you're going to spend your money, well, the more reach that that publication has, the more expensive <coughs> the ad is, right? The more you have to pay that publication. Well, guess what? You have an audience and it's valuable and you should be rewarded for that. And so that's why Cliff gives cash to our endorsers for your reach. So you want to be thoughtful about the message that you send when you when you share something. That's why Taylor Terry is so successful with her with her content is because she doesn't just send shoot out a canned message and shoot out you know messages that are, aren't relevant to her people and that don't you know go along with her. She's authentic. She protects and values the relationship that she has with her with her followers and she only shares things with them that she that she knows they'll love and so they react. And so the more that they react, the more that they spend time with these campaigns, the more money she earns. And so, you know, as marketers, you should be thoughtful on any engagement that you have with anyone. And even in your career path, what are you putting on your LinkedIn profiles? How are you engaging people to want to know more about you? And so, how do, you, how do brands get their customers to want to share them and get their friends to want to know more about the brand? 
So, um, you know, I talked to you guys about activating their customers. So what we do at Clip is we will design and produce, uh, you know, and help them distribute co-branded materials to help them grow the program. So social media posts, marketing emails, table tents, bill insert cards, window clings, uh, register or point of purchase materials, uh, you know, print. Uh, they can basically put us into any kind of uh, program they already have, even if they're doing out-of-home billboards. So we'll help them co-brand that because, you know, Clip is not about putting your brand into our community. Clip is about creating a program for your customers that love you. And so as Clip endorsers, you get the benefit of seeing all these unique cool brands to discover new ones, or maybe you'll come in through a brand that you love and they'll have a program just for you. But, you know, it's not about just sharing something that you've never been to. It's about, I know this place. They have great food. I know this boutique. They have the best selection. Their buyer is amazing. They have great cute stuff. Um, I'm a flower bomb wearer. If you any ladies know the general flower bomb, that perfume is my favorite perfume. I would not endorse any other perfume because that's me. And it's all about me. And it's all about you. It's all about who you love. So brands have this unique opportunity today to make real connections with you, to listen to you, to know what you want. And the brands that are doing it right are engaging with you. They're listening and they're responding and they're telling you that they care. And what's important to you should be what's important to the brand. And so smart, 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 smart brand marketers understand that. It's about listening, responding, embracing, and building the relationship. And so, you know, that's what activating your customers is all about for us at Clip. You know, we don't just say, cool, thanks for the ad buy, see ya. We want to help our customers build their Clip program because it's going to be, you know, really fruitful for them like it was for Aaron, which is why Inc. put us in the top 10 um, most ingenuitive ways to market your business. And we've been featured in Inc. actually twice now in the past two months because of the success that we're having. And it's not just because it's great for the brands, it's great for you. It's a great experience, and it's super fun, it's super easy. You know, I told you guys before that, uh, you know, 455 people, 100 people, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's a really, really big reach off of 100 people, and it's qualified leads. That's something that you guys should think about when you're talking about influence. You know, we talked about the, you know, measured success. So our reports come by way of, really lame data, but I tried to spice it up with a lot of creatives where it didn't look like a lame data form. And uh, we can tell them about their distribution and performance so, um, you know, they can know where it was sent out and they know how many people clicked on it and how well it did. We can give them geographic location information. So, where did your brand have the most success? So, if your brand is considering where they need to focus a lot of uh, growth dollars in, um, for things that are maybe out of home and other, other areas other than just social, we can tell them what geographic locations are most, um, most fruitful for them. <clears throat> we can also tell them the endorsement demographics and interests, which is really unique. So um, we don't give them personal information. So there's no PII, but it's aggregate information. So we can say that your endorser, you know, Starbucks coffee is interested um, also in pets. 60% of them also love pets. So maybe Starbucks could start doing some pieces of creative that include animals outside of Starbucks, hanging out, drinking coffee. Why? Because then Starbucks can make an emotional connection, deeper that connection, with their customers. And maybe they start selling um, dog cookies in Starbucks, people to take out to their dogs. The data is really, really important, um, and it's really, really amazing if you use it. So that's one great thing that we have to offer to our customers. And then we have brand campaign roll-up performance. And basically, just in one snapshot, here's what's going on with, with your endorser <coughs> set. Uh, we sell packages. And so those packages are basically the, uh, priced to total campaign activity. And so that total campaign activity is a, basically a sum of how many endorsers viewed it in Clip, uh, how many of them shared it, what was that endorser's reach, um, how many people actually viewed the campaign, which means they decided, I want more information, I'm going to click on that, and then they showed the big full screen creative. Um, how many people clicked on the different actions. Uh, you can build in multiple calls to action with us. So instead of just having to click here to visit our website, it could be click here to call to get an appointment, or click here to like us on Facebook, or click here to follow us on Twitter, all in the same place. Because different people want to communicate with you in different ways. So if you give them the opportunity to communicate with you in a way that they feel comfortable, you're going to have a lot higher conversion. And then we also track redemptions. 
So we can tell if, um, if, like, if you have some kind of an opportunity that you want to drive someone into your store, and it's to redeem, you know, a complimentary gift, or it's a bundled service, or it's, uh, you know, really the the world is yours. It's one of our brands. You can do whatever you want. But we can track how many people actually went in and did that because we have location-based technology that will tell you. So if you guys are on Foursquare, you're checking in on Facebook. That's all LBS, location-based services. So that's, uh, that's the way that we leverage that technology for brands and help them uh, make better decisions and see what calls to action are actually working for them. So why would you participate in Clip? Um, we're not all the same people. We're all motivated by very different things. Some of us don't care about money. Some of us care about um, you know, philanthropy. Some of us care about being a first mover. Um, I <coughs> will admit that I had a MySpace account. Yes, I did. And I remember when Facebook was coming down the pipeline, and I was like, why in the hell, excuse my French, that's just who I am, would I ever have a Facebook? I have a MySpace. I don't need Facebook. I, that's really hard for me to admit that, that, that that's the truth. And, uh, you know, I have friends that were first movers, and now they have that badge. You know, they have, you know, now they call them badges for things on Foursquare, which I'm also a Foursquare junkie. That's a whole other issue. But, you know, people want to be first movers. They want to have a big Twitter following. They want to be able to, it's, you know, it's a, it's a popularity contest now. It'll be a popularity contest at the end of time. When you're in kindergarten, who's most popular? When you're 50, who's most popular? That's just the way of life. So now with Clip, popularity pays. Popularity can pay um, by being a big influencer, by being a first mover. It can pay by actually getting cash. Popularity can pay by getting an emotional connection with your brand. And now we're introducing Clip for a Cause. Clip for a Cause is being released um, at the end of the year. And I'm really excited about this because I spend so much time working with charitable organizations uh, here locally. The Family Place is very near and dear to my heart. You guys may have heard of Partners Card that just actually happened last week. Partners Card, um, you buy uh, a $20 or $60 card, and that money goes directly to the Family Place. And that helps them um, help mothers and their abused children get away from bad situations. And they help them restart their life. And wouldn't it be awesome if I could endorse Lexus and be earning money for the family place? Um, we also have partnership for Drug Free America. Um, this is your rate on drugs. You guys remember those commercials? And you can forget those frying eggs in the pan. Uh, they have rebranded. And so they um, have a whole new program and it's really all about helping people who are um, you know victims of drug abuse that aren't the drug abuser so you know all of these really cool things that touch me personally are why I would be driven to participate in clip as well as um, the cool perks that I get from my brands so um, you know I know Soto likes the cash um, I know that uh, I have friends in the Dallas Social Media Club that love it because they're the first movers. And, and my point is that you can't expect that your whatever you do with a brand to be one size fits all. And so that's why Clip is so cool because you can really have an emotional connection with your customers by basically giving them choice as to what's going to be important to them. If they're not motivated by money, they can give it to charity. You know, so that's one thing that's really really cool about Clip. And um, as a Clip endorser, you can endorse up to four, four brands a day. And really, it's four endorsement opportunities. It could be all the same brand. But that's designed to protect the integrity of the budget for the client. It's also designed to um, give you guys thoughtfulness about who you're going to endorse. Now, I get to choose four things to endorse a day. So who are they going to be? Who's going to get my endorsement? Who's going to get my vote, almost? Um, you guys get to personalize your message. You get to tell your own story about that brand, product, or place, and share that. Um, and you get to choose how you want to share it. Like I said, you get to rate your campaign. You get to watch in real time <coughs> your, uh, your points grow, which will get you to the next levels. And you get to watch your earnings grow in real time, too. So you actually get a Clip Visa card that we send to you once you're gold. And you can spend that Visa money wherever Visa is accepted. And that's pretty freaking cool. You know, you don't have to wait for, you don't have to like transfer this or PayPal that or any of that stuff. It's so easy and you can use it anywhere. Um, and then, you know, you get to earn the perks from the brands. And for me, I mean, even if it was Campbell's Soup, if you're a stay-at-home mom 
and I'm not a mom, but I am a domestic diva. I love cooking. Um, Campbell Soup could do a really cool cooking class that you know, could be totally exclusive to their endorsers to show them how to use some of their new products in the Campbell's kitchen. There's a lot of women who would love to do that. That's not me, but I will tell you that Kleenex, Viva paper towels, get out of here. That is the only paper towel that I will ever buy because it's the only paper towel that works. And I would endorse new paper towels until the day that I die because, you know, some, I mean, men, you guys just don't even get it. Paper towels suck, and Kleenex Viva paper towels are amazing. Who would have ever thought that somebody would be that passionate about a product? We all are. We all have products that we choose every single day, and that means something. That means something to you, that means something to the brand, and that means something to your friends because you can turn each other on to really cool stuff. And that's really what Clip is, is all about. And those perks are all about, you know, giving you new cool experiences with the brand to give you a deeper connection. You know, when you get to personalize and share that campaign, this is basically kind of what it looks like. Um, you can say what you want, and it's attached to the brand creative, and someone can click on that, and then they get to be served up with the full screen creative that we talked about. That's the card. Kind of pretty, isn't it? I love it. I'm waiting for mine, because I'm now elite, but, you know, anyways. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, in summary, it's all about the relationships. It's the relationship between the brands and their customers. It's the relationship between your customers and their friends. Um, you know, our program provides setting up and launching all of these things for you on your behalf. We'll take your creative, we'll optimize it for all screens. Um, we enable the customer to actually endorse you and to share you. Um, the campaign distribution, we track all of that. And as I said, we have the analytics. But the benefits of being a Clip customer as a brand are increasing your customer spend, attracting new customers, um, the flexibility of the campaigning and the viral impact, um, and the accountability of your ads and where did my money go? What did I just spend my ad budget on? And then the measured response. I would really urge you guys to download the Clip app. It is available in the App Store, it's available in Android Market, um, or on Clip.com. So if you don't have a Droid or an iPhone, you can join and participate on Clip.com as well and you just fill out your interest profile and then you'll be matched with things that you love. So if you're not interested in certain things, you don't select that and it's not gonna be in your face. You know, I think that's one thing that's really great about us is that it's all about you. And you know, you don't have to see things that you're not interested in seeing. Um, right now, in the app, just for being an endorser, these are just some of the places that you can actually go. So the sweet spot, like I talked about, grabbing sell kids clothing, any of you moms um, or dads that have kids, um, that is the coolest website for clothes. So you get to get on, or if you have nephews or nieces or brothers or sisters, um, Christmas is coming up. So this website, she's actually based in Texas, believe it or not. You get to go on there, you choose your garment, and then the, the kid gets to choose what design, and they specially make it just for them and send it to you. So there's um, some really unique deals um, right now that you can get from her uh, just for being an endorser. <clears throat> and then the sugar box, if you guys are ever down in West Village, you get a, a pup cake with purchase, which is a cupcake for your puppy. That's pretty cool. Um, I have a little French bulldog, her name is Sushi, and I love her, and she's spoiled. So maybe I am a mom. Uh, Lone Star Coffee Bar, that's not very far from here, it's up at Austin Ranch. Um, you can get a complimentary cup of coffee. Uh, you know, these are just some of the Lash Lab. Lash Lab does eyelash extensions, ladies. That your eyelashes. Don't, uh, don't have to put on mascara, that'd be pretty awesome. So that's just kind of a taste of what you can get for being an endorser. But I mean, there are Motorola's in there. I mean, there are tons of different um, big box brands and local brands, and we are just now coming out of the gate. So, you know, I'll let you in on a little secret. There are some really big things coming down the pipeline. We just went public, so I can't actually say what they are, or I could get in big trouble with uh, Big Brother. Uh, but it's some cool stuff, and if you're an early adopter or endorser, you're gonna get some really unique opportunities that once that next step happens that they won't get, endorsers won't get. So I really urge you to download the app. And if you want to find us, uh, we're Clip Dallas and Clip Endorsers. Clip Dallas is all content specifically for you guys. And then Clip Endorsers are for endorsers nationwide. We're also on Facebook, so you can like us on Facebook. But that's really our model. Um, you know, I've been where you guys are, and I'm sure you're trying to navigate where you want to be in your career. I'm so lucky. I mean, I've, my, my, my past has been in working with um, music is where I cut my teeth. So I was in the music industry and I remember when, you know, the internet came around. That sounds so old. God, I'm old. Um, and I remember when Napster hit and it was like, oh my God, 
Napster is going to ruin the music industry. And I remember having conversations with some of the guys that I was touring with. It's like, look, ideas are not going to go away. So, you know, the lessons that brands can learn from that fiasco in music is embrace new ideas, embrace technology, and embrace telling your story in new and different ways and figure out the way to monetize it. Steve Jobs did. It's called uh, iTunes. He made it pretty. He put a price on it. And it's essentially the same thing. So you have to be forward thinkers. You know, I always say think beyond the box. Don't think in the box. Don't think outside the box. Think beyond the box. There is no box. It's totally up to you. And so when you're making your decisions on where you want to go professionally, you know, be thoughtful. What makes you tick? You know, I started working with, with artists because I loved music, and that led me into working with brands, doing artist endorsements, which led me into publishing. So, you know, I've been publishing, I've been in print, I've, I've always been in brand advertising, whether the brand was a musician and the label, or the brand was Red Bull. Did you guys see Art of Can a couple of years ago that was at the gallery and those really, really big billboards with Red Bull, and there were always really cool art pieces that were made out of the cans? Yeah. So that was the project that I did. So, you know, my, my purpose in bringing that up is my career path has taken me on a lot of different turns. And I'm so lucky because I followed what I was passionate about and I didn't give up. And I will tell you that I did a ton of internships. I did so much free work. If I could have even gotten a penny for all the free work that I did, I would be sitting fat right now. So I'm not complaining. My point is telling you is that you guys can't expect to walk out into the world and be handed a job. So if you guys want to be in marketing and you're passionate about the space, you need to be thoughtful about where you can be working and doing internships and beginning experience. You can have 10 degrees and no one's going to hire you. I have, uh, I'm, I'm actually the hiring manager uh, for my department, and I, you know, I'm constantly getting resumes, I'm like, God, I wish this kid would have done internships. I can't hire him. He's got, a, he's got great education, you know, he's very well spoken, but he has no experience. I can't bring someone into my business at the speed that we have to move and expect and have to train somebody in the space. So whatever your skill set is, if you want to get into social, if you want to get into mobile, and really now it's mobile social, they go together. I mean, where are you actually uh, posting for, on Facebook? From your phone. Where are you tweeting? From your phone. So mobile and social is it's the same. So, you know, it, <clears throat> I'm sure the years I've been talking about QR codes and where that's headed, I think Google goggles will kind of, and, and um, NFC technology will kind of take over on that, but it's still fun to follow. You know, and it's fun to watch what's trending in this space and what the opportunities are because you can learn from those and apply those to the new technologies and, and the new ideas that come down the pipeline. Um, and we do have internships at, at Blue Clubso. We're actually not very far from here. Um, our headquarters are down the street at, between Frankfurt and George Bush off the tollway. So, you know, the professor has my contact information if you guys are interested in internships. But there are also great agencies that are here locally, Tracy Locke, the Richards Group. I mean, there are lots of great advertising agencies that you can participate in. But I really urge you to get out there and get the experience that you need. And don't be afraid. I mean, internships are, can be really fun. And it's not about just what you know, it's about who you know. And the only way that you can build those relationships is by getting out there and getting in the space. Don't hide behind your desk, don't hide behind your computer. Get out there, meet people, and start building your skill set. Because when your resume shows all of these different people that you have relationships with and that will recommend you, that's how you're going to get a killer job. So, that's it, guys.